In this segment, I'm going to be talking about the Bass Fly Rig by Tech21. And for today's examples, uh, I've recorded some bass loops with my beautiful Fender Standard Jazz Bass, uh, made in Mexico, and it has a maple neck and a custom blue pick guard that I installed myself. So this here is the Fly Rig, and I'm going to turn off all the stuff so we start from the beginning. Uh, and this is a bass loop. Mm -hmm that I recorded. So that's just the jazz bass with the um, neck pickup rolled down just a little bit. And so this is the Sans amp by itself, which even sort of set all at 12 o'clock, adds some, some stuff. So this character knob is very powerful, so I'm just going to turn that up. You really hear it grind there. Um, and that this drive knob is kind of emulating the uh, power amp section, I think, on a tube amplifier. So character knob all the way down darkens it up a lot. And then even with the drive up, it's saturated, but really just like fat. And then they give you this, like, I'm going to put these at 12 o'clock, and you get this bite button. It's like a presence boost. Okay, so leave these guys just in the middle, and this is the compressor. So I'm going to just have the compressor by itself now. So, okay, nothing. And then you can definitely hear the compression working. <laughs> it's beautiful. And that's just at 50%, so if you turn it all the way up, it's really, uh, really compressed. And so that with the Sans Amp together. Uh, and then they give you this, um, this boost uh, section, which has a pre-post button. And it gives you a, a selection between having the boost come before the Sans Amp or after. So before it's going to add more drive, essentially, uh, to the input of the Sans Amp and give it more uh, saturation. And then if you put it after, uh, it's going to give you a clean boost um, you can use for you know a solo section just to get louder or, or whatever you want to do with that. Um, so I've also got some drums with this, so let's mess around with that. <laughs> So here's with the boost. So this is a pre-boost and it's going to affect the, uh, the Sans Amp input. So that's, that's pretty in your face bass. Um, and if you hit the post button, very punchy, clean. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to another loop. Okay, and uh, right before I do that, I'm just going to look at the um, the manual for a second. So, um, just uh, to go over what we we just talked about, um, the compressor um, they say is a single continuously variable control to dial in just the right amount of compression you need. A little goes a long way from soft and barely noticeable to super squashy infinite sustain which is pretty useful for being like a bass compressor in a pedal. Um, then they give you the tone control to bring back some of the top end that might be lost by having the compression turn up a lot. And then you've got the boost section, which uh, we, uh, we already talked about. Uh, then over here, they get into more detail about this character knob, which um, I, I think is one of the coolest things on the pedal. Um, obviously, the drive is just going to give you more overdrive. Uh, but character sweeps through an entire range of tonal possibilities. In addi addition to modifying the frequency response, character also influences the attack and drive characteristics. Therefore, you may need to adjust your gain and tone settings after tweaking the character control. So, and then they give you some examples of like below 12 o'clock is like a 70s powerhouse attitude, and you know, full up gives you full tilt, distorted bass tones, etc. But you know, you just turn the knob and, and stuff happens, essentially. <laughs> um, so you've got low, mid, and high EQ, which is pretty standard. Uh, and then the bite switch uh, activates a, a presence boost to the Sans Amp tube amplifier emulation circuitry. Heavy. Okay, so let's jump back over to some examples. Um, so this is a slap bass. 
So this is just the jazz bass, all the knobs turned up, playing some slapping. And uh, let's just have compression by itself and see what that does. Really nice compression, I like it. Um, and then let's do the sans amp. Which added a lot right there. So um, with this kind of bass tone, it, it gets kind of dangerous with the character knob, I think. Like into that area, I, I don't like that kind of slap bass tone. Um, and what about drive? Yeah, it gets kind of kind of nuts. <laughs> Um, and let's see the bite knob on this. Yeah, still too much, too much top end. Um, okay, so let's just add the drums to this one. Okay, so what's the boost gonna do? So this is boost on pre, so it's going into the sans amp input. It's a little bit more tolerable saturation, I think, in that way. And then post is just a clean. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna clear everything again. Um, and let's just uh, jump back to the manual. So there's this section on the left side that's the octave filter and the chorus and everything, um, your effects. Uh, so just a, a quick overview. Um, so the octave filter has the octave and fuzz uh, buttons, uh, which are independent, so you can have one or the other or both at the same time. Uh, and then you've got mix, cue, and range. Um, so just uh, obviously mix is going to be between dry signal and effect signal, so you can have it half a half or you know, go up from there. Uh, and then Q, they say, adjusts the bandwidth and sharpness of the dynamic filter. At minimum, it's smooth and allows the range control to act like a tone control that slightly rolls off the higher frequencies. At maximum, it will provide the most dramatic transformation. And the range is controlling the frequency range of the dynamic filter and is dependent on the volume of your instrument and how hard or soft your attack is. At minimum, the input has no effect over the sweep of the filter. At maximum, the input determines the overall sweep of the filter, which becomes greater as the signal gets higher. Um, so that's technical, but uh, I think it kind of gives you that envelope sort of sound, like a Mutron or, or that sort of vibe. Um, and. Uh, the chorus is, is pretty straightforward. It's just like a chorus effect, which sounds really good. I, I like it a lot. Um, and then there's a toner and a headphone uh, button, so that will switch this output um, to be the right impedance to make your headphones work, and it'll be on the left and right side, uh, which is different from its regular use of just like plugging into a sound system or uh, recording into a computer, that kind of thing. Uh, and then you've got the XLR output, which uh, is just a balanced, better output uh, type of signal that you can use to go right into your um, your interface or, or this front of house system or whatever you're doing. Uh, so they give you these uh, cool examples of what you can do with the uh, fuzz and octave stuff. Um, so I'm just going to dial in this like basic octave effect. So it's like octave on and then they say the cue should be all the way down and then the range is going to be your tone control for that. So let's just uh, go back to this and see what it does. Am I on the right thing? No, I gotta go to the next, the next example to keep it cool and interesting. And then I'm gonna start with just the bass by itself so you can hear what it is. So I tried to do something that would work with an octaver, <laughs> which obviously not everything does. So this is compression. I'm going to back that off so it's just kind of like normal, normal down the middle. Uh, and then the sans amp, which gives it some definite grit. And here's with the octave. And it's okay. Let's see. 
So yeah, adding a lot more uh, top end to that. Um, but yeah, I noticed like with a lot of octavers, the, the effect is kind of like delayed almost. Um, so if you have the mix too high, it, it sounds really weird. And that's where you get, and it does the envelope thing. Okay, I'm just going to hit the fuzz button. So that's with everything all the way up, and it's just ridiculous, so let's hear the drums of that. We haven't heard the chorus yet, so let's see. I really do like the chorus. They just give you one knob and it, it just sounds good. And you get more or less. Okay, so chorus with Crazy Octa Filter. So you can get this thing to sound pretty nuts. Um, so I have one more example just uh, to show you what it sounds like with a pick uh, going through these things because um, that could be useful sometimes for certain tracks. So that's just me with a with a pick I'm trying to play fast and it's not easy. I haven't practiced that for a while. I learned that today. So let's hear compression. You can definitely hear the compressor attacking the, the sound, taking those uh, transients off. And then sans amp. So let's hear it with just, just the fuzz. Pretty powerful. Um, with the drums. Okay, let's add the octave. That is some heavy duty rock and roll there. Yeah, as they say in the manual, the, the knobs are very sensitive, so a little bit goes a long way. Um, and I just, on the filter, I just have it, everything cranked up to 100 uh, just for fun. But you don't, you don't need to do, obviously, uh, that. Uh, it has so many uh, tonal sort of variables that you can get out of that by combining what the cue and the range do together uh, with the mix and create a usable sound. Um, so this is the bass fly rig. Um, I had a lot of fun messing around with this today, and I hope you enjoyed watching this and maybe you got something useful out of it. Um, so I'm going to see you in the next video.